I don't know that it's culturally cool to be a Christian anymore. Right. And so these these kids that are in church and are, you know, so hungry for relationship and so hungry for insight and so hungry for encouragement and admonishment and it's it's really an honor to be a part of to be used by the Lord in that way, you know. Hey, I'm Andrea Olson. I've been leading worship and training worship leaders for nearly 20 years. And my mission is to support worship leaders just like you in volunteer supported ministries because I know what it's like. I've been there. It's amazing, but you have a big job. And sometimes you might feel a little bit alone, but I'm here to remind you that you aren't. We'll cover spiritual and leadership growth, practical resources, and get encouragement from other worship leaders from all over the world. I truly want to see you lead from the overflow, not the overwhelm. So grab a cup of tea or coffee and join me. Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of the Overflow Worship Podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. And I know this is new and exciting that we also have video. So this is really fun. We can like interact in a new way, which is just awesome. I love technology. And, you know, we have had some amazing guests over the past few months and today is no different. So I'm just going to jump right in. I'm really excited to have Billy Demira with me here today, all the way from Colorado Springs, Colorado. He is with with um, RMC Worship, and I'll let him talk a little bit about the church and the ministry, but welcome, Billy. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited. Yes, absolutely. Me too. So why don't you kick it off? Just tell our listeners a little bit about you and where God has you today. Yeah, so uh, my name's Billy, like uh, you said, and uh, I'm at a church called Rocky Mountain Calvary in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, I've been here for uh, almost eight years. Uh, before that, I uh, lived in South Carolina, worked at a church called Seacoast for a while. Um, it was a blast. And um, I've I've been married for uh, about eight years as well. We have one son. His name's Witt. Um, and just really, really blessed to be at the church, blessed to live in Colorado, blessed to be here. It's been, it's been a wild ride, but it's been awesome. Hmm, that's amazing. I love that. Well, so it's, it's January at the time of the recording. What's the weather like mm-hmm. in Colorado Springs? So it's weird. Um, last week or two weeks ago, we had uh, about a foot of snow. And then this past week, it's been in the 60s. So you never know. Today is pretty cold, but we get a lot of nice okay. days in the winter too. So it's not too bad. That's great. That's great. Well, we're in Minnesota and we're having... Yeah, <laughs> we're having kind of a historic uh, winter. I don't remember winter like this since I was a kid. So it's fun because we have three girls. And so they're just like, this is awesome. But so far, I think cumulative, we're approaching two feet of snow. Um, oh, so, man. which is, yeah, it's been a little crazy, but it's, you know, it's good. <laughs> it's kind yeah, of fun. I love the snow. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in South Carolina where it never snowed. So it's still, it's still really fun for me to uh, see the snow out here. I, I don't get tired of it yet. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I guess I didn't realize there was, there could be that much snow down there in Colorado Springs, but that's pretty cool. You get the best of both. You've been it all melted, it's right? True. It's 60. It's all gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's gone. That it, it doesn't hang around too long, which is kind of weird for Colorado, but here it's, it's not too bad. We love it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll add that to my list of potential awesome places to live because of you know, good weather patterns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I would love it if, you know, we could just talk a little bit about the, about RMC worship, you know, tell us a little yeah. bit about, uh, you know, is that a newer group that has formed? I know it's probably formed out of the worship team at the church, but just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, you're exactly right. It formed out of the worship team at the church. So, uh, maybe five or six years ago, uh, a guy who, who was on staff with me started writing some songs and we were going through this season on our worship team where, um, man, it, there was like infidelity and miscarriage and divorce, like all within our, our core team of people. And it was a really, really rough season. And so we started writing songs out of that, just, um, you know, what would our worship team love to sing? What would our church be able to get behind and uh, kind of be transparent in what we were going through and write out of that season? And we wrote 
five or six songs and we never did anything with them. Like we played them at church and people were always like, when are we going to get it recording? When are we going to get a recording? And uh, we were like someday. And, you know, we never did anything with them. The season passed. And I look back at that and think like, what were we thinking? Why didn't we ever do anything? And so mm-hmm. um, recently uh, we hired another guy that I, I went to worship school with. Um, his name's Cameron. And we started writing. And in January of 2022, we kind of sat down and I I was like, man, we can't let this happen again. Like we have these songs mm-hmm. that are really fitting for the season at our church that we're writing out of, you know, the seasons of life that we're in. And we have to just do something and record these. And uh, we recorded that song, Never Change, uh, this summer and released it in September. And man, the Lord has just used it in in more ways than we ever thought were possible. And so we kept writing and kept being diligent. And then hopefully we're going to release an album later this year and uh, just see what the Lord wants to do with it. But um, you know, we really started writing out of what what our church would want to sing. And uh, to be honest, whether, you know, it's the the body of our church that hears it or, you know, the big C church or whatever you want to hear, as, as long as we're being faithful to what the Lord has called us to, then it's a win. You know what I mean? If it never gets beyond mm-hmm. our four walls, then it's a win for us. And so we're really excited just at what the Lord's doing. Even that, you know, even to be on this podcast is crazy. So it's it's just really cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. And I think that's the perspective that we all need to have because when when God puts something in our heart, the outcome is not up to us. You know, it's like right. he calls us exactly. to obedience and mm-hmm. to, you know, whatever he chooses to do with what, you know, he sets in front of us is really up to him. And who are who am yeah. I to say, you know, like, well, that should have been different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. And And I think being on the other side of that where, you know, we felt the Lord's leading and really missed the window. Like it's, it's a huge regret that I still have to this day, you know, like we recorded some of the songs that we never did on, um, this upcoming album, but it's not, I don't, it's not the same. You know what I mean? Like they're still awesome and I still love them, but it's, it's just a little different. It feels a little different. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I I think it's, a good reminder that God is a God of perfect timing and redemption. You know, he, Mm -hmm. he works in all things and through all things and has a plan for those songs still. Uh, but I, I I can empathize with you in that in a missed opportunity, but it it probably wasn't a missed opportunity. Maybe it was, you know, just something that he was using, right. For your team to kind of learn through and process through. And it Mm -hmm. was maybe a therapeutic thing to write those songs. Um, and, and now there's, there's going to be power in them. I'm sure it's, it's exciting. And it spurred us, it spurred us to be spurred us on to be where we are right now, you know, to really be diligent Mm -hmm. and really put the time in, and the work and, and not let that happen again. So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I was reading just a little bit about uh, the song that you guys released, Never Change, back in the fall of 2022. And Mm -hmm. you referenced Psalm 4610, which I love that verse very Mm -hmm. much. It's very close to my heart. Um, Yeah. And I just wondered if you would talk a little bit about the story uh, behind that song, maybe speak into how that verse plays a role into the song a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, I wrote that song. Uh, I started writing that song with a buddy of mine, um, like 10 years ago and we never finished it. And, uh, in March of 2020, my wife and I had our son and, uh, three months after he was born, he got really sick. And so since, since then, for the past um, almost 18 months, we've been trying to figure out what is going on. And so, um, man, we've been in the hospital for, you know, cumulative like months. And uh, we know like the ER staff by their first names. And it's it's like this wild thing. And he has um, like we just found out he has this crazy rare uh, genetic condition, like 80 boys in the world have it. And they have no idea mm. really what anything 
looks like for his future or like lifespan. It's, it's insane. And I didn't know all that writing the song, but we were still in that season of trying to figure out, you know, what was going on. And, um, we, we wrote that song as kind of an anthem to, to sing whatever season you're going through, you know, like that Psalm talks about, you know, the, the world, the earth is literally falling apart. The, the earth is falling into the heart of the sea, but I can be still and know that you're the Lord, that you're God, and that you're going to be exalted among the nations. And um, I wanted to write a song basically just just proclaiming that. And so we took the pieces that we had with that song, added a chorus, kind of revised some of the words. And, um, you know, there's a there's a verse in the song that I, like, I still pretty much cry to every time we sing it. But, you know, it says like, if you give or take away, you're my God and that'll never change. And I think it just sums up that Psalm and uh, my life in general right now, (laughs) where like, man, like we have the choice every day to either give in to the chaos of our life or trust in the Lord's promises and trust in who he says he is and believe what he says. And I think that there's, there's so much more challenge in, in choosing to believe in the Lord as opposed to, to get bitter and to kind of give into your situation. But, um, you know, praying through this song and, and listening to it and even singing it at our church, like, man, it has become that anthem and it's so sweet. You know, I know that everybody has their different heart and everybody is going through different things. Like even in our ministry, you know, being on the pastoral staff, there's so many stories of people who are just going through hardship. And so this song has really rallied our congregation together in my heart as, as a worship pastor and as a worship leader, um, to be able to choose to sing that you're my God and that'll never change in spite of what's going on. And it's been a really, really beautiful thing. Hmm. Wow. Wow. That is a powerful story and a sounds like a powerful anthem, not only for you, but for your church body. And yeah. I think that, that that's the beauty of songs coming from within the church, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because yeah. they are the stories of the people in your body. Uh, I, uh, I've quoted this several times. I've heard Paul Balash say this many times. And he, he says, you know, writing songs, you just pen the prayers of your people, pen the prayers mm-hmm. of the people. That's what it is. Yeah. And I think that's I so powerful that. when we just listen to what's happening around us in our own church body and penning the prayers of the people. And it sounds like they're not only your prayers, but they're the prayers of those in the church body too. Yeah. We joke about these songs that we've been writing, um, just from like my season of life that these are like our Psalms, you know, like that we're Mm -hmm. like David and and Getty and we're just like hanging out, like being chased and everything's crazy. And we're like, well, we're just going to start praying to the Lord. And then I love how David in the Psalms, every time, like he writes like, what are you doing? Why is this happening? And then there's that Selah moment where he breaks and he's like, no, I'm going to choose to praise you and choose to like worship you. And I think that's like where a lot of us are, you know, I think, uh, yeah. it, it's been a really, really cool thing. And, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful, even though it's been really hard. You know, I think one of the things that's really cool and really hard about, uh, being in situations like this is like, you know, that the Lord has promised that it's good and you see his faithfulness in hardship, even though it's brutal. Um, but you see him working and moving and doing things like, uh, you know, Ephesians three 20 talks about, you know, we're praying that God would do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine for his glory in the church. And I think when, when you walk in obedience, like you were talking about, and you see some of that stuff start to play out in the midst of your life feeling like it's falling apart. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. Amen. And and I think what's, what's so powerful, you talk about the Psalms and you feel like you're in that, right? Like you're writing yeah. Psalms. That's what your songs are. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I think it's powerful that we have the Psalms in the Bible as a representation of what worship is like, mm-hmm. it's okay to come to God and be like, I don't get this. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand. This is hard. I'm hurting. I'm scared. I'm sad, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But then it's like that realignment, but I know that you're good. And, yeah. and I know that I can be still, even though that feels 
contradictory when we're yeah. in the in the fire in the storms and i would imagine that this process has been a powerful example for the young people in your life and in your church community because you're mentoring them in yeah. what worship really is. Right. And so let's let's talk a little bit about that. What what has that looked like for you as a worship pastor, as uh, you know, somebody who is kind of cultivating, well, not kind of, you are, you're helping to cultivate this atmosphere uh and this culture of wor worship. And you're exemplifying to the younger generation what that looks like. So talk a little bit about that and what that's looked like in your church and in your life. Yeah, I think um, I'm still in the process of, of figuring out what the Lord is doing through all this. And I think it's going to be a process that, you know, we go through for the rest of our lives. Um, but we have seen an influx of youth worship leaders over the past year, um, that I would never have imagined. Um, we have a larger church, so there's a, there's a large, you know, there's a, a bigger talent pool, I guess you could say to pull from. Um, but I think leading through example and just being vulnerable with, um, our team has been a huge cultivator of, of culture, if that makes sense, um, to just be real and not la not act like I have it all together. Um, and I know that there's, you know, as a, as a, as a pastor, there's things that you have to balance in that. Right. But I, I think leading by example, which is, is a challenge every day, honestly, but to choose to worship, to lift up that sacrifice of praise and everybody knows, you know, like what we're going through. Um, but it's been awesome for our, our church culture in worship. And also, uh, I think, I think that sometimes there's a stigma with worship leaders and pastors or, or who, even church staff in general, that there's this facade that we have to put on that we have it all together. And I think that sometimes that can, that can kind of scare people out of ministry, because I think that sometimes people think that if they don't have it all together, they're, they're unqualified for ministry. And I think just through sharing and, uh, you know, even the songs, like you can totally see the heart of our, our worship in the songs. Um, but it's really inspired a lot of youth to want to get involved. And we, um, that guy we hired Cameron, he oversees, uh, youth worship and him and I, when he got hired, kind of came up with this, this vision to create a multi-generational culture of worship. And so he's taken the last, um, year and a half and really, really, really poured into the youth ministry. And, um, we've done tons of workshops, uh, you know, like theory classes. Um, we do a, a kind of a worship leading workshop the first Friday of every month where we all get together and kind of like uh, ensemble bands and, and talk through the songs and, and not like critique each other in a rude way, but kind of like talk through, um, you know, worship leading moments and all this stuff. And, it's yielded so much fruit. Like we're using so many youth on the weekends in our main sanctuary and they're writing songs. And, uh, for the past few years, we've sent, you know, upwards of three or four people a year to different worship colleges to become worship leaders and pastors this year. Uh, you know, we've really committed to investing in, in, uh, three or four people who have a ton of potential and, um, we've just walked through them walked with them through high school and through life and through challenges. And, uh, they're all going to worship college this, this year to become, you know, worship leaders and pastors And our, our church model, uh, or our church, um, you know, mission statement is, is to be, make and send. And it's so fun to walk out being a disciple, making disciples and then sending disciples, even mm -hmm. though the sending part isn't always really fun. You know, you've like put yeah, a, put a like, bunch oh, of time. Really? Into, yeah. You put a bunch of time into people and they're like, I got a job or I'm, I'm moving because I'm going to worship college. You're like, oh, OK. All right. But it's awesome. Know, you're like, that's what we trained you for. <laughs> yeah. But oh. like, do you have to? And they're like, you did this. I'm like, yeah, yeah we did. But, I did. Yeah, I did but it's been this, really, yeah. <laughs> really, really cool. I, I, it's been a really, really fun season of ministry, and um, it feels like we're just getting started, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of like the the steps that we've been taking 
to invest in youth and disciple youth is really how Jesus did it with the disciples. So, um, you know, he starts, I'm going to try and get my hands in here, but like he starts and the disciples watch, right? And then Jesus does something and the disciples help. And then the disciples do something and Jesus helps. And then the disciples do it and Jesus watches. And so that's kind of the model that we've taken them through of, hey, come alongside me. And then, you know, slowly giving more and more responsibility and talking through until, you know, now, like, uh, like I said, we were out of town last weekend and I had um, one of our, our youth worship leaders lead worship with a few people in the sanctuary. And it was awesome. Like they killed it. And it's like, I'm like a very proud dad moment. You know what I mean? To like see, see them step into leadership and, um, take ownership and just do it. And I'm like, oh, this is, it's, it's the most fulfilling thing I think in ministry for me is, is Mm -hmm. making disciples and watching people succeed. I, it just, it really gets me fired up. I love it. We are going to take a quick pause from today's episode because I have a free gift for you. You know, leading worship is a big deal. And as much as the responsibility thrills you, it also can be a little daunting, right? And I know because I've been there. As someone who's led worship for more than 20 years, I know how stressful prepping for the weekend set can be because let's face it, Sunday's always coming. So I've developed a checklist that I go through every single time I'm preparing a set list for an upcoming service and it really helps a lot. I feel confident, I feel prepared. It saves me time because let's face it, volunteer, you're probably spending precious evening time working because you're just trying to fit it all in. And so this helps you work smart and saves you time. And most importantly, it just helps me make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. It's helped me for 20 years and I'm giving it to you for free. So click the link in the show notes or head on over to overflowworship.com slash set list checklist to get yours today. All right, back to today's episode. Oh, yes. I love that. And me too. I think that's one of the things that gets me the most excited is when I see young people stepping up and stepping out and and mm-hmm. just leaning into leaning into their calling. It's just yeah. so powerful to watch and I think, you know, f- for me, it's like what am I doing if I'm not raising up the next generation, you know, because none of this is about me. (laughs) Right. It's, um, and so, yeah, I just, I was just talking to somebody recently. I've been helping, uh, the, the youth worship team at our church. They don't have a staff person for just, you know, the youth music. And so I've been helping kind of get them, get them back on their feet again after some transition time after COVID and everything. And, um, you know, one of the moms was just like, you know, kind of joking, like, oh, bless your heart. You know, like I couldn't work with the kids or whatever. And we just kind of joked. And then I said, but seriously, if I do nothing else, like I, I'm great just being here with the kids worship team because they're so precious Mm -hmm. and powerful. And so I just, um, you know, commend you and encourage you too, because I think what you're doing is just incredible. Yeah. And I like, that's where my life got changed too. Like I was a stupid, I don't know, stupid high school kid. And then, you know, the Lord really got a hold of my life at, 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 like my junior and senior year of high school. And, um, it's such like a formative time. And I think that, I don't know that it's culturally cool to be a Christian anymore. Right. And so these, these kids that are in church and are, you know, so hungry for relationship and so hungry for insight and so hungry for encouragement and admonishment and you name it. They just want you to like be in their life. And I'm like, what, yeah. what did I do, first of all, to deserve to be in your life and to be trusted? But like, hmm. I'm I'm here for it. Let's do it too. And then to see them walk out some of these challenges and encouragements and all this stuff. And like you said, just really step into calling is so, it's, it's, really an honor to be a part of, to be used by the Lord in that way, you know? Absolutely. I love that. Well, I think that all of our listeners are getting some, some powerful reminders and encouragements today. Uh, Everything from, you know, what it's like to be still in the storm and being faithful with the things that God puts in your heart in those seasons. And then remembering that it can't stop with us. We have to turn around and we have to pass it on to the next generation because like it or not, eventually we're not going to be here. (laughs) True. Very true. (laughs) So 
you know, if we don't, if we don't raise up the next generation, who will? And so I think that it's a powerful reminder for all of us. Now, I would imagine you probably experienced the same thing as me, that it is a lot of work. Like it's not easy yeah. to train up the next generation, right? <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, it's hard, um, but it's rewarding and it's worth it. And for sure, you never know who's whose life you're changing. Like you said, you were one of those kids whose life was changed. I was one of those yep. kids whose life was changed by somebody being willing to. <laughs> my mentor said, "A snot-nosed kid." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was to, me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, invest in me and saw something that you know he just thought was special. So mm -hmm. I think that's really powerful. Well, you know, before we wrap up today, Billy, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Anything else on your heart to, to leave them with? Um, no, I think that, uh, well, maybe actually I said no, but then I was going to talk. So, uh, <laughs> I think that, I think that there's so many things that as a worship leader, you can be pulled into. And I know that there's a lot of churches, um, you know, where, where worship leaders are blending positions, like you're talking about, like you're leading worship, but you're also in youth and discipling youth. And then I know that there's a lot of people who are also involved in audio visual and, you know, the whole, the whole thing. But, um, kind of like you said, like what, what we're doing is worth it. You know, whether it is on a Sunday morning in a church or whether it is in a youth's life, and I think that, especially in this season for me, like it's really easy sometimes to be discouraged and to let ministry become a job. But like when we're reliant on the Holy Spirit and when we're really trusting the Lord to lead and guide and invest in the things that are eternal, like there is so much, there's so much gold in that. I don't know how else to say it. Like there's so much. Yeah beauty in that. And I think that like you're talking about too, with, with worship and stuff like that, like the Bible talks so, so much about the sacrifice of praise, right? And there's going to be times in ministry where it's a sacrifice of praise to, to do ministry. But, um, I would just encourage everybody to really just press in and, and continue forward. Cause what you're doing, what you're doing is worth it. And it's making it an eternal impact, whether we see it every day or not. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that word of encouragement. And, you know, I just want to say that, um, you know, I, along with, I'm sure many of our listeners will be remembering you and your family in our prayers too, Thank because you. I know you're still in the fire and still yep. in a season of not knowing what's next. And, um, I can't imagine what that is like every single day with the child that you love so much. So I yeah. will be remembering you. And I know that our listeners will be too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Billy, where can people find out more about the music? You've got an album that's coming up and then you also have music that are already released. So tell everybody where to find you guys. Yeah. So we're on all major streaming platforms. If you just search RMC Worship, um, we also, uh, you know, just started an Instagram page and we're updating our website now to make it a little more easier to find our stuff. Um, but so hopefully in the next couple months, we'll have more details. Uh, it's RMC worship pretty much everywhere. So if you look, you'll find us. <laughs> Amazing. Sounds great. Well, everybody will put all of those things in the show notes as well. So if you can't remember that, it's just a click away. It'll be hyperlinked in the show notes for everybody too. Billy, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, that's another episode of the Overflow Worship Podcast. Thanks for being here today. And thanks for those of you who joined us to watch on video. It's a new thing for us to be totally on video as well. So if you liked it, tell us, tell your friends. And remember that when you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, it really does help us reach more people. And also, if you tell us what you like about the podcast, it helps us deliver you content that's relevant and helpful for you. So everybody enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and until next time, be blessed.